Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to the first lesson of this is chapter 10 in Math 30-1, Operations of Functions. Topic is Addition and Subtraction of Functions. All right, so just a bit of review from, I'm going to say from Math 10 review over here. So we have the function y equals negative x plus 4. So this is a function in a kind of x and y, it's kind of plain notation over here, but we do have something called function notation. So we can rewrite this guy as y equals, so as f of x equals negative x plus 4. So with this, what's this notation mean over here? So what this means is, so what does f, which is the same thing as y, equal when x equals one. So when so in this case we're going to find x equals one, which is here, and it goes up there, and you can see that the y value is three. So f at one equals three. Over here, this is saying what does y equal or what's the function equal when x equals three? X equals three, function equals one. When the function equals five, so when the x equals five, the function equals negative one, okay? So that's how this part works over here. Indicate each point on the graph. So we have zero, f at zero. So what this means is, well, what's f at zero to begin with? f at zero is four. When x equals zero, it's four. So this is the same thing as just, okay, what's the point zero comma four? This can be this point right here. Zero, f at zero. 2.5 f at 2.5. So here's 2, here's 3, 2.5 would be here. So here's our point, 2.5 f of 2.5. Okay, so it's a little note at the bottom here. For any graph, x denotes the x, very trivial spot over there, but then f of x denotes the y coordinate okay so f f is referring to the y where x is referring to the x coordinate okay so for this question over here a little tricky to understand at first but i'm just going to kind of do the question and then I'll, i'm going to explain the rules to you afterwards so what we're doing here is this point is negative two comma four and this point is negative two comma zero now what we're doing here is we're going to show you this in the next slide as well this is saying we want to subtract the f of x minus the g of x now like we said before the f is referring to the y coordinate okay now now why is it f and g well g also is referring to the y coordinate but g is referring to the y coordinate of this parabola here where f is referring to the y coordinates of this linear function over here, okay? So when we have f minus g of x, what this means is that we are subtracting the y coordinate. So if I have a y coordinate of zero and a y coordinate of four, my new point, it's gonna be cut off the grid over here, but is going to be negative two comma negative four. Okay, so we'll talk about this more in the rules section in a couple of slides from now, but we keep the same x values, but then we subtract the y values. If we look at here, these points intersect. So in other words, they both have the same y value at this point. So it's negative one, one, and negative one, one. So if I subtract one minus one, I get zero. This resulting point is going to be here at negative one comma zero, okay? Um, the next point that's going to do over here, we know that, so I'm going to say when x equals 0, that means f at 0 is 2, g of 0 is 0. If I subtract 2 minus 0, I'm going to get this point here, 0, comma 2, when x equals 1 f at 1 equals 3, g of 1 equals 1. 3 minus 1, because I'm going f of x minus g of x, is 2, so I'm going to get 1, comma 2. 
let's look at this point. So when x equals 2, we have f of 2 equals 4, g of 2 also equals 4, 4 minus 4 is 0. So we're going to get 2 comma 0. What we're going to get is we're going to graph that looks kind of like this. It's going to look this parabola opening down. It's not a very good picture over there, but it's going to look something like this guy over here. Okay. All right. So it's kind of basically how I did. Now let's kind of slow down just a bit over here. First of all, here's a new introduction of some new notation. If we're adding two functions, f of x plus g of x like this, we will sometimes write it as f plus g of x this. Similarly, if we're going to subtract two functions here, f of x minus g of x, we can write this as f minus g of x, like this. All right, so we have some rules when we add or subtract functions. Rule number one is we want to find points with the same x value. Okay, first thing we're going to do, find the points with the same x value. Two is going to be add or subtract, depending on what the question is saying, the y values. And three is going to be plot new point And put in brackets, same x value, new y value. All right, so we're following these rules over here. All right, so you know what we're going to do for part A over here? Cross it off. Guys, I've made another video on domain and range. If you need a bit of a review on domain and range, I would definitely recommend checking that um, video out as well. All right, so we're going to figure out the plot the domain of y equals f of x and g of x on a number line. So just quick remember, what's domain mean? Domain is the set of all input values. or the same set of all x values. That's what the domain means. Okay, so when I'm looking at, so here's my number line. If I look at my f of x function, well, this guy goes forever to the left and forever to the right. So anytime the graph kind of cuts off like this, we always assume that there's arrows on the end of it like this. So the graph's gonna kind of go on forever in both directions. Okay, so, so our f of x domain it's going to look like this. This is f of x. Now our g of x, though, as you can see, this graph starts here at negative 3, and it only goes to the right. So at negative 3, we start here, and we go to the right. Okay. We're going to come back, and we're going to plot. I'm going to do part C first, and then I'll come back, and we're going to look at part B. All right. So the thing for this is, like, we need to find, so, so our, our rules for adding functions, so this is f plus g of x, so we're adding f of x plus g of x. Rule one was find points with the same x values. So here we have 0, 2, and we have, oops, mess that up there, my mistake. This is not 0, 2, it is... negative 3, 2, and this point is negative 3, negative 1. So here's step one. We've identified points on each graph with the same x values, okay? Step two was add. So in this case, we're adding, so we're going to add the y values. 2 plus negative 1 is 1. Step three was plot the new point, and the new point was going to have the same x value, but with a new y value. So our x value is negative 3. 2 plus negative 1 is positive one. So this is going to be here. Okay. Um, if I'm doing this guy here, 
we have negative 2, 0, negative 2, 1. So negative 2, they have the same x values. 1 plus 0 is 1. This point's going to remain the same right here. Okay. I'm going to skirt all the way over to this guy over here next. We have 3, 3. No, it's 1, 3 and 1, 0. So they have the same x values. 0 plus 3 is 3. So, so, so 1, 3 is going to be our next point over there. Okay. So what this graph is going to look like is another thing. This graph is not going to go anything further to the left of here because since there's nothing to the left of negative 3 on g, well, there can't be anything to the left of negative 3 on f plus g of x. So this graph is going to look like this goes like this. One second here, guys. Okay, so this graph is going to look like kind of flatten off over here, and then it's going to kind of go up through this guy, kind of a curved graph looking like that. All right, so what's our domain and range of this guy? Well, we're going to do just the domain. We're going to forget what the range for right now. Our domain is going to be the same domain as g of x was. So our domain was, I'm going to write this in set notation brackets. So what this says is the domain is all values of x. This line over here means such that this is saying that x has to be bigger than or equal to negative 3, but it can be any real number that's bigger than or equal to negative 3 as well. So we're kind of defining what type of number is going to be over here as well. Okay. So this is in what we call set notation. Another way we can write this is in interval notation, which would be written like this. So, guys, again, check out my other video on domain and range and we kind of cover interval notation in this guy as well. But this means that we're starting at negative 3 going to infinity. Square bracket means we're including negative 3 because we're including it because it's equal to. And we always put a round bracket on infinity because you can never actually get to infinity, so that means you're not actually including it. All right. Operation, so function operations. Given... Uh, f of x equals 2x squared plus 3x, and g of x equals 5 minus x, find uh, for f of x. So this is more of a, um, say this review from uh, math 10. So what this means over here, 4, is what we call a scalar. That means we are multiplying 4 times our function f of x, which is 2x squared plus 3x. So this can just be 4 bracket times 2x squared plus 3x is... 8x squared plus 12x. Okay, done. B, a little bit more difficult. This means 2 times g of x. So my g of x is this guy here. 2 times 5 minus x minus f of x. And I'm going to put f of x in brackets. The brackets are important here because we need to make sure we're subtracting the whole thing. We're subtracting this term and this term here. Now it's going to distribute. The 2 comes to the brackets, and we get 10 minus 2x. 2 times 5 is 10. 2 times negative x is negative 2x. This negative gets distributed to both terms as well. Okay. So this equals negative 2x squared. Negative 2x minus 3x is negative 5x plus 10. And that's the answer for, the, for example four. All right, example five. Determine uh, f of x if h of x is this and g of x is this. So, um, trickier question over here, but what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, what do we make sense of, of, of this statement? This is telling us that h of x is f of x minus g of x. And now we're going to plug in everything we know. Here's our value for h of x. It goes in here. 
This is 3x squared minus 5x minus 4. We don't know f of x, so we're just going to leave it as f of x like this. It's f of x minus g of x, so minus, and I'm going to put in this term. We have 4x squared minus 7x plus 3. All right, so what we, was we're asked for is we're asked to figure out what f of x is. I'm just going to multiply this negative through the brackets, distribute it out. All right, so how did f of x by itself? I'm going to get rid of this negative 4x squared. So that means I'm going to add 4x squared to both sides of the equation. They cancel out over here, and that gives us 7x squared. I'm going to get rid of the 7x. I'm going to do that by subtracting like this. I'm going to add... 3 to both sides like this. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And that is what f of x equals. Okay. So there's my answer for this question over here. So f of x is 7x squared minus 12x minus 1. So in other words, if I was so if I was to subtract this function minus this function, my result would be this function over here. Okay, so it's going, it's going f minus g equals h. And that's what this is staying here. Okay, a bit of a trickier question here. Um, I think we saw this on, um, I saw this on a quiz at some point a while ago and I, I, I kind of liked the question like that and I thought my, my, my kids actually did struggle with it a bit so I thought I'd kind of put it in the notes for you guys. So what we're looking for, we're looking for the x-intercept of this guy over here. So for x-intercept, is always going to be a point that looks like this. It's some x value. It could be more than one. But then the y value is always going to be zero. Okay. So where is this going to happen on this graph? It's going to happen twice. It's going to happen here. Because at this point, we have 3, 1. And... 3, negative 1, okay? So in this case, if I was to add 1 plus negative 1, it's going to give me 0. It's going to give me this point, 3, comma 0 here. So we know that 3, 0 is going to be an x-intercept of this combined function over here. Now, it happens one more time in a graph here. It happens here when we have this point, which is 5, comma 3, and this point, which is... 5 comma negative 3. Okay, so my x values are both 5. 3 plus negative 3 is going to equal 0 as well. And this can give me this point here, which is 5 comma 0. So the x-intercepts are 3, 0 and 5, 0. All right, guys, there you guys have it for the first lesson. I hope this all makes sense. And, um, you know, please come and let me know if you guys have any more questions. See you in the next video.